This video is about geometrical optics. So to understand geometrical optics, you have to understand what light is. So life, light behaves as a wave and a particle. It's called the wave-particle duality, the wave-particle dual nature of light. It acts as a wave. This cartoon represents a wave. This cartoon represents a particle. So light acts as both a wave and a particle. And in geometrical optics, we're dealing with the wave properties of light. So what is a wave? Uh, there's two types of waves. There's a longitudinal wave. Uh, examples of longitudinal waves are sound waves and there are transverse waves. And examples of a transverse wave would be uh, ocean waves, wave on the ocean. Or if you took a rope and swung it, uh, that would be an example of a transverse wave. Light acts as a transverse wave. So light can be represented as a transverse wave. So let's go to this picture here. So let's say you take a stone and drop it into a pond, a pond of water. You have waves, ripples of waves, just exactly like this, exactly like this on this picture. Light can be represented exactly like a water wave because a water wave is also a transverse wave. So as you see in this picture, you see ripples of waves that are circular. So you can think of it this way. You can think of each circle on, on, this, on the pond of ripples is the maximum part of the transverse wave. So for example, let's say you take a cross section. So this would be the maximum part of the transverse wave. This would be the throw, the minimum part. And again, you have the maximum part. And you have a minimum, and you have a maximum, the minimum, a maximum, etc. So each circle represents the maximum of the, the transverse wave. So let's say you're flying overhead and you look down. Uh, you're Superman and you're flying overhead and you look down and, and you see uh, the bird's eye view of this pond and the pond will look like this, right? So each circle is again, it's the maximum of the transverse wave and the pond looks like this. Each circle on this diagram represents what's called a wave front, a wave front, a wave front. So uh, this is how uh, you can conceptualize light as a wave front, exactly like a puddle. So you can imagine this. Uh, so this is a, a source, a point source of light that emits wave fronts, exactly like if you were to drop a, a stone into a puddle and it creates ripples. So this point of light this point, this point source of light represents ripples, uh, and the ripples are wave fronts. Now, perpendicular to the wave fronts, perpendicular to the wave fronts, we call that rays. So if you take something, a line that's perpendicular to each of the wave fronts, you have a light ray, and that's where the light ray comes from. And a light ray it's a very powerful technique because then you can draw a ray diagram. You can have a lens, let's say you have a lens here, and then you could draw rays coming in, and then it being refracted to a single point. You can draw ray diagrams. So that's where you get the ray from. That's where you get light rays from the wave front. Uh, a light ray is perpendicular to the wave front. Now, there's something uh, also from the wave front, you get something called virgins, also from the wave front. So again, there's a picture here, and you can see the wave fronts, just like, it's just um, a semicircle. I could draw the complete circle for you, so you can see the wave front here. And here's another wave front. 
I'm just drawing like a semicircle and another wavefront and another wavefront. The curvature of the wavefront is something called a vergence, a vergence. And you can quantify that by a number. It's called a vergence. You can have divergent uh, rays. In this case, you have divergent rays. So the rays are going this way. Uh, excuse me, the, the wave fronts are going this way, going from left to right, from left to right. So these wave fronts are divergent because they're getting less and less curved until they get flat. These wave fronts over here are convergent, so they get more and more curved as they get closer to the, the point. The wave fronts in C are flat, flat rays. Um, Flat rays are when you have divergent light and then you have a very long, let's say it travels for six, uh, over the greater than six meters becomes more and more flat. If it travels for a long period, divergent light will eventually become flat. So um, you have flat rays after divergent light diverges, um, to, so to speak, until it becomes flat. And then you can also see the light rays each light ray is perpendicular, perpendicular to the wave front. So you can have convergent light rays, convergent light rays, and divergent light rays, or just plain um, light rays going straight. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about uh, drawing ray diagrams, and I'll talk about calculations using divergence. And these two things are very powerful, especially the divergence, because with this, you calculate the image of the object through a lens. You calculate the magnification of the image. And you do many things with this concept. All right, that's it. Hopefully that helped.